When you hear that glitch, it's time to thwip. What's up, guys? I'm AJ, and welcome back to the thwip side. And today, I'm doing an old school review of the McFarlane Toys Special Edition Spawn 3 Series 7 action figure. Checking out the box, very appropriately 90s. Of course, colors splashed everywhere. I believe this came out in 97, 1997. Spring action cape, light up eyes that um, I doubt work anymore. Special edition Spawn 3, your choking ha hazard. Big, big Spawn logo here. The figure and some stuff it comes with in an open window. Oops. The top, here's some more of that. Spawn logo and graphics. I didn't pay $11.99 for this, by the way. <laughs> here's the side. Here's the back. Where you see all of Series 7. I do have Crutch and Salmon Twitch from this series, but I want to get better versions of these because I'm missing all the accessories with the Salmon Twitch. I wouldn't mind also picking up the Mangler and Scourge either. Here you have Series 6 and Series 5 and Total Chaos. Okay, so let's get ready to crack this guy open. And here's Spawn 3 out of his box. Unfortunately, blending very nicely with my backdrop. Maybe I should have went white like I did with um, Dead Man. But anyway, it is what it is. I'm checking out accessories. He does come with this cool axe. It's got some nice dings and dents and things. It's pretty cool. And then he comes with this bat. And this figure is based off of, um, I believe, Spawn Issue 43. I could be totally wrong, but I believe so. It is one of my favorite Spawn covers ever. And I'm actually looking into purchasing a t-shirt with the artwork of that cover. Because I just love that cover art. But moving on to the figure. We'll take a closer look. He does have his giant wingspan. We've got like sculpted plastic and it's a foldable cape with some cloth. And we'll get to that feature in a minute. He does have his head sculpt. The eyes are a little weird because they were light up. Let's test. I doubt it works. You're supposed to lift the right arm. And yeah, no, no light up. <laughs> I didn't think so. But besides that, he looks pretty cool. He does have some chains going around his belt. And of course he's got his van braces with all of his spikes. It's nicely painted, nice clean paint app. And then taking a look at the back, you should see the back assembly for that um, folded folding wing gimmick. So I will say, at least on this particular figure, the folded wing gimmick is a pain in the ass. I can seem to only, I seem to only be able to get one wing down into the assembly before the other, um, as I try to get the other one, it tends to pop. So it's actually frustrating the hell out of me. You gotta hold everything together. See, very frustrating. So, of course, being from the 90s, articulation isn't quite what it is today, or wasn't quite what it is today, but he does have a head swivel, his arms move up and down, you've got a elbow joint, no swivel at the wrist or anything. Um, let's see, what else we got going on here? Not much more. Just trying to make it so that cape doesn't pop. Leg kicks up, you got a single joint and knee, and that is about it. But that is fine for this era. And here's Spawn 3 with all of his accessories. This owl doesn't clip on or anything, so it's just balanced. So <laughs> it will fall off if you move it around. Bat I have hanging there. And I will say this elbow is really loose. Oh, there goes the bat. But anyway, like it, oh, it won't hold. Oh, I'm a liar. It just was not holding the weight of the axe. Maybe I pushed it up into position, but it is really loose compared to this elbow. So bottom line for me, this McFarland Toys 
Series 7 Spawn 3 Special Edition action figure is a frustration level to the max and a pain in the ass. Uh, sad to say, I wanted to like this figure a lot more than I currently do. And it all comes down to that pain in the ass cape. Maybe because it's old, obviously, coming from 1997. Um, things aren't as, as they should be in this mechanism, but... It's just a really pain in a real pain in the ass to keep to get both wings to fold down, and of course you leave them up. You're taking up a lot of shelf space. Even if you ha have one half, one up and one folded. So what I may do is just get them into a position and try to put some tape on the cloth. I also feel the more I mess with it, the more I'm in danger of ripping this stuff. I mean, this is an old figure, so that's not the fault of the figure really in some instances like the loose elbow and things like that i don't think is the figure's fault and it is now holding the axe as you can see i was able to get it to be in that position but i feel the more i try to mess with it and force both sides of the cape to fold in the more and the more danger i get into of it ripping so i might just for uh shelf space wise just tape it down or something where it's not going to stress stress it too much, the fabric or the cloth goods, I should say. So yeah, pretty disappointed just because of the frustration level. The gimmick is a cool idea, but uh, in this state that I have this figure now, it's just too frustrating for me. <laughs> um, with that being said, comment and tell me what you think about the figure. Do you happen to have this figure in your collection? And if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button and thwipping that notification bell. And I will catch you guys very soon right back here on the thwip side. Later.